Hey, pretty Isan girl. Yeah. Look. You better watch it. Don't mark about with Isan girl, okay? Sub sock. Sub sock. Hi again and welcome back to part 5 of our house build here in Udon Thani, Thailand. If you've missed any of the other videos of this house build and they start right from when we bought an old house, pulled it down, flattened the land to where we are now. If you've missed any of those, I'll put a link at the top of the screen here where you can click to a playlist and that will take you through to the complete set of these videos in this series. So in this video you'll see the latest progress on the house and how far the builders have got with it. I'll also answer a question that I get asked so many times and that is why did we leave such a beautiful pristine part of England and come and live here in Thailand which some people see as a bit ragged at the edges and I'll answer that question through this video. But before we move on to those two subjects I want to take you to a traditional part of Thailand something that's happened over the last few days it's something that Pook and her parents get really involved in it means a lot to uh, the Buddhists here in Thailand Three months ago, July the 6th to be precise, uh, was the start of Buddhist Lent. Now this means that it's a time when the monks go into the, their uh, temples and they don't come out. They usually come out every morning doing their alms round and other bits and pieces in the community. But during this three months period, they do nothing at all other than stay in the, the temple, praying, studying and meditating. Now the marking of the end of Lent was on Friday the 2nd of October, Friday just gone, and that's what this is all about. Now preparation for this celebration started the day before when it seems like everyone is in their kitchens cooking and preparing food to take to the temple. And of course, Pook's family are no exception. What's going on in the kitchen today, Pookie? Oh, today we are going to make kotom pat. Kotom pat? Yeah, pat means stir fry. They got, um, but this recipe, mum going to, um, stir and cook in the wok first, but normally she wrap, she wrap this, and I'll show you. Your feet are slippery, aren't they, because you've been yeah, in the wet this. floor. Tell me what, this is rice, obviously, yeah. yeah. she's going to stir this. This one she already soaked it up, Dr. Mong. So she's got plain jasmine rice, yeah? Overnight, yeah. No, no, no this, this is sticky rice. Oh, sticky rice, okay. Yeah, you can soak up about a few hours, but mum, this is soak. So uh, she soaked it in plain water overnight? Plain water. So it absorbs lots of water? Yeah. Okay. And, uh, and then, what's what's going on at the moment? What's your mum stirring over there? It's coconut milk. Just coconut milk? I'm still going to put it in the milk. I'm going to put it in the milk. A little bit of salt. Okay. And then stir gently. Okay. To, well, to the meat with the salt anyway. Okay, so. And like I said, I'm done, but I'm done. Yeah. Taste it. Yeah. What, to see if it needs more salt? Yeah. No double dipping, <laughs> only use the spoon once. Give <laughs> one. <laughs> no, no. What do you think? Huh? What do you think? It should be soft for me. Too much salt, is it? What does your mum think? Okay, ba. Oh, it's boiling. In with the rice that's been soaked overnight. We take some to the temple and live at home. So this is f preparing f something for a special occasion, isn't it? Yeah. Tell me about the special occasion that's happening. It's like tomorrow going to be finished Lent day. End of Lent day. End of Lent. And that's the three months that the monks yeah. stay in the temple yeah. supposedly and um, and they just 
spend all their time meditating and yeah. Remember three months ago, yeah. I made with mum and last month. So start of the three month Lent, mm. um, you have a big celebration then you take food to the temple. Yeah. Then the monks take this self-isolation thing where they stay in the temple for the three months meditating. Mm. And people bring food to them rather than them going out on their arms yeah. round. They just stay in the temple. This is secret recipe. Secret recipe. All right. Don't tell us the mix, but tell us what's in it. This is this is well. They call the head one, the thick one. The they thick start one. used with the light one first, but this is on top of the. It's like they don't need much water in it. This but is, you haven't told me what it is. Coconut milk. Oh, it's coconut milk, okay. Can you see this is coconut milk? Well, it could be cow's milk, it could no, be anything, I don't know. Milk. I'm an ignorant Westerner. <laughs> and so this is the top part. It's like the cream of the coconut milk. It's like when we were younger, you used to get the full cream milk out of the fridge and there was always thick cream on the top. And I would imagine with coconut milk, you get the same. Very rich. Yeah. Little bit sweet and little bit head of peanut. Peanuts? Are they oh, peanuts? Well, yeah, well, well, oh, she wanted oh, some okay. without, didn't she? No, um, we're going to add peanut in it. Yeah. Dad don't like it. When no. we wrap it, we take some peanut. Yeah, off. I'm not that and keen. And you don't like it. No, I don't like peanuts. I, I like the soft texture of the, I like it. the wrap itself. So that's brown sugar you're adding now. Brown sugar. Okay. Oh, how much brown sugar do you put in there? Is it just Three. guesswork? Mm. This one. One kilo is about two, three hundred grams. You because won't put the whole lot in, will you? No, no, no. But how about it say but not? No. You just make it like a little sweet and oh, the taste of coconut. Okay. We taste it for it anyway. Okay. Mm. After that, we leave it cold. Leave it to cool down? Yes, and then wrap in banana leaf. Okay, so should we cut this here and come back? When you, Is there anything else to add to this now? How about saying it? No. Okay, so that's it. So you just leave it now to cool down, and then well, they'll yeah, wrap them in banana leaves. And then you you steam it, don't you? Yeah, we're going, this mum recipe, this one, we're going to steam it. Okay, so when you're ready to wrap in banana leaves, give me a shout and we'll, we'll film that as well, okay? Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. What's going on here then? We are wrapping the one we made earlier. Sticky rice, peanut in it. Okay. And then add banana on top. Let's get a close up of this. That is, I think so I'm, I'm doing better now. A bit of that sticky rice, it's mm. got peanuts mixed in with it. Yeah. Banana on top. Mm -hmm. And these banana leaves out of the garden that are cut to a special shape. Mm. Go on, Pookie, show us how it's done. Mm. I'll film you first and then I'll film your mum. Yeah. You, you don't slow down, don't show off. Don't show off. You're doing exceptionally well. I can remember yeah. not so long ago you were having a few problems with these, but problems. looks like you're doing all right now. Beautiful. Do you do the little um, huh? the little wrap thing as well to tie yeah. it up, or did so you? Yeah. So you make two of them like this. Okay. And then put it in together. Because that's quite difficult, but this is the hardest part, I think. Yeah. And what's that made from? What you're wrapping Bamboo it with? Bamboo string. So String? it's just like the actual bamboo itself. This is the way I make it, but mum, she like, do like it. Like yeah, I know, I've yeah. seen her. Okay. And then make it a little bit high in it, a little bit, to make it beautiful. You mm. two string. Yeah. And then put it in there. You can try. You want to try? No, no, no. I so saw I'm really quite busy back upstairs, but I just wanted to come down and catch this on film. 
And did you say you're making some without peanuts in? Yeah, peanut in it. Mum, use that tray. I'm using this, but mum, get it off the peanut. She's doing some without so peanuts. So this, this one with a lot of peanut in it. Okay. I like it, but dad don't like it. You don't like it. I don't like the peanuts. And no. three people in the house don't like it, so... so okay. Turn it off like that. Look at that. It's I done. Know. Sorry, mate. Getting better, isn't it? It is. Beautiful. And faster as well. Yeah. <laughs> so tomorrow we are going to the temple. Okay. Again. It's going to be uh, going to be a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to speak slowly. Okay. Are oh, you are okay? Mm -hmm. It's... The, the, the yeah. viewers always moan about me speaking too mm. fast. No, sometimes I'm lazy and I'm not speak correctly. Some English speaking viewers understand poop more than they understand me. <laughs> no. Because my South East London go, yeah. speedy talk loses them. Is it 430? I'm not good at that. Yeah. Okay. This is when you usually burn your mouth, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, too hot. I think you should open it and just let it cool down a little so bit. So this one, no peanut in it. Wow, beautiful. Like it. Turn it over so we can see the banana. Oh, sorry. This is banana here. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, I thought banana was on the other side. Oh, okay. One. Okay, here we go. Hello, mate. Mm. Hello, my cup. Hello, my cup. It's, um... How can I describe it? Very similar to rice pudding. Oh, yeah, yeah, because they're coconut in it and... Coconut milk, whereas in the UK you would mix yeah. the rice with normal milk, cow's milk. Yeah. But the, the texture of it is very similar to rice pudding mm. and the flavour is very similar as well. Okay. Aloy? Aloy. 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 Aloy, Pat. Pook's dad likes them. <laughs> very good. Thank you. And the ceremony starts with the monks saying some prayers and when they're finished they go outside the temple and walk around collecting alms from the people that are sitting outside. Once that's complete they come back inside and there's some more prayers said inside the temple. And then, as with so many other ceremonies in the Buddhist um, religion, it ends, the prayers end with pouring the water into the bowl as they're praying, 
and then that bowl of water is then taken outside and poured under a tree while more prayers are being said. Something I don't fully understand quite yet, but um, it's something that I will look into and find out a little bit more about. Are you okay? Are you safe there? Yeah. I know when you're lighting fireworks, they say keep a safe distance, but I think you're pushing the bear, you're, you're going a bit over the top. Overacting. Overacting. At the end of the day, the boys got some fireworks and set them off in the garden. So that's how Thai Buddhists celebrate the end of the Buddhist Lent. And I hope that you've enjoyed that little peep into a more traditional side of Thailand. So let's get over to the update on the house build. You may remember if you've seen it already, the build had reached a stage where all the block work was complete, upstairs and downstairs, stairs, inside and out, and the glass blocks that we've had put in in certain places just to allow a bit more light into the place, that was complete as well. So that's as far as it got, so let's have a look around and um, see, see what the next stage is. Yesterday they were putting these strings up, yesterday and the day before, to give a level as to where these corner pieces go. That's ready for the render now. Once the render goes on there, this corner piece will just protect that corner, stop it getting chipped if anything hits against it. And they've been all around the window frames with the same stuff. morning <laughs> in here too yeah it looks like the preparation for the render is complete doesn't it Started to tidy up as well, clear the floor. This is a lovely space up here, isn't it? This big open space here. Yeah. It's almost tempting to leave it like it, just like an open plan, chill out area. <laughs> there isn't really much to film today, is there? They've put the edges no. on the stairs. Render will be the next big change, won't it? And I'm sure they'll start that today. They've still got to put the edging pieces on up here. But here you can see the string that they've put in place. They've put these strings in. And that's marking out where the edge of the corner pieces go, ready for the render. It keeps it all level and nice and straight as well. And we're back just to see what work progress um, happened yesterday. We had a meeting with the electrician and the architect yesterday just to finalize and confirm where all the light fittings are going, the switches, and the sockets so starting outside here you can see they mark it up with that red paint to show you where everything's going that's one of the outside lights another outside light there and they've cut the channels in in place and there'll be another outside light on this side three wall lights
light switch there, that's going to be a three way. That's going to be for the wall lights. There's some other outside lights that we're having as well that will be switched from there. And also the ceiling lights once you come into this, this living area. The sockets, they cut through the wall like this. Very unusual. That's maybe because the, the blocks are quite thin that they have to cut right the way through. And then also, of course, they've chased all of these runs ready for the conduit to go in place to take the cables. So here's the light switch. And the socket. That power socket's outside, that's not inside this room. That's in the... Outside. Yeah. And then there you've got a power socket and a socket for the TV adapter in this room. We're going to have a, a TV socket on the wall in this room. Sockets either side of the bed, underneath each window for bedside cabinets or bedside tables, table lamps, that kind of thing. Is this is inside or outside? Or outside? This is inside. This one inside? Yeah, this is for the light in this room. But, look, and you got all out here? Yeah, they'll still run the cable outside. Oh, but sweet inside? Yeah. yeah. Under the stairs here, this is where we're going to have the consumer unit control box or the RCBs and then next to it is going to be a data adapter, a data um, socket so that's where the router can go out of the way under here and also of course there'll be a power socket there to plug the router in. To plug what? To plug the router in, you need to power oh, the right. router, it needs to plug into the mains. Light so switch. Hmm? The power going to plug on there. Yeah, that's going to be a double. That will be that will have one little socket for the router to plug in for the mm -hmm. data. Yeah. And a power next to it. Oh. You keep eye on that. Yeah. This is and, going to be a. Huh? And there, no um, socket. Let's have a look. Where the fridge going to be, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know what that channel's for. Huh? I'm not sure what that channel's for. Oh, it goes outside, so that's probably going to be the earth. Oh, right. Going down into the ground. Oh, okay. So if anything fouls or if there's any short circuits we on didn't, the... We didn't uh, mark this one, do we? No. But that's what that's going to be. It goes, okay. the cable comes down the inside of the building and then goes to the outside of the building. Okay. And it looks like that's going to be the ground, the earth. Another socket there. They've cut the channels. This one, the earth one, sorry. You don't have to connect, you know, the one you want on the roof. Yeah, yeah. If we want a lightning conductor, they can just connect it straight into that earth, yeah. Mm. Mm. I've cut the channel here. That little hole down there is going to be for the outside socket, a waterproof socket. And then up there is where the shower unit's going to go, the, shower, the water heater for the shower. And then there'll be a few more added once the gypsum wall's in place. That's not happening until the tiling is done, the floor tiling. But you can see what they've done. They've run the channel, they've started to run the channel down here, ready to put that socket in the corner there that mm. you want. Just Don't they cut it, like prepare for it first? Prepare for what baby? For the... Um, Don't they cut the cement down here for it really for the the wall here? You know, just make it like... I'm like not it. too sure if they'll run the cables down. They might just run the cable Maybe down do through the gypsum yeah. wall. The dry line wall. Socket over there. Well, they have done upstairs. What made me think they hadn't done upstairs yesterday? Yeah. Socket just outside what will be Pook's mum's prayer room, and one just inside there. Another one in this corner, so there's two sockets in this room. And then our bedroom. 
we put a TV socket there. Just but I'm key. not sure that we're going to have a TV, and if we do, it'll probably just work off the Wi Fi. Power socket there, power socket each side of the bed. And that's about it, that's all there is to report today, really. All these channels and the openings ready for the boxes to take the switches and the sockets. There's a little diagram that he drew just to confirm that everything is going to be <laughs> three pin, live, neutral and ground. Absolutely essential. Still surprised that they used um, two pin sockets in some places, in some instances, just live and neutral, no ground on it. And when I asked him about this, I said, are all of the sockets going to be three pin? Mm. He said, oh, you want them all three pin, as if maybe they weren't. Mm. I don't know. It's probably not a big deal, right? It's not. You just yeah, yeah. buy a three pin socket and, and instead of a two pin. And the cabling's always got a ground in it anyway. You've got three cables. Mm. You've got the insulated live, insulated neutral, and then the ground is just a bare copper wire mm. for the safety aspect. So that's it, no change other than that. I love this space, I really do. If we had another bedroom somewhere, I'd love to have had this just as it is, just an open space. Still, never mind. Out on the balcony. This is a lovely area, this, because this is gonna be shaded. The sun comes up at the front of the house. So the back of the house is nice and cool in the mornings. And we've already got plans for the outside kitchen and we're looking to extend this balcony area to give us a nice square roof space above the kitchen area and then that's going to give us an outside patio area I suppose. <laughs> outside the back there's going to be a waterproof power socket there and one over in that corner there because this is where we're going to extend with the canopy and build an outside kitchen and anyone who's not seen the Australian outdoor kitchen should have a look at them they're great and that's what we're going to have out here it'll be covered by a canopy that canopy will be strong enough to use as a patio area upstairs and maybe just maybe even a little spiral staircase here going up to that <laughs> patio area so I can deliver you can cook food. the food and you can <laughs> run up those spiral stairs with my, <laughs> my lunch and dinner Oh, it would just be nice, I think, so you've got the choice you can have when family are around or people are here to eat. We can cook here and rather than running through the house, you can just walk straight up the spiral stairs. I maybe put the food in the basket so you can... Yeah, a little <laughs> rope to lift it up. And more exterior lights. There's going to be an outside light on that corner there. One here. And one on this post here. So that's it, three exterior lights down this side, three exterior lights on the front wall. Back again just to do an update. Not a lot changed really because it's just been the electrician working and then the builders filling in after him. So you can see where the outside light's going to go. The channel was dug. The conduit was put in place. And uh, they've refilled that and then put the wire mesh over it, ready for rendering. So there's three outside lights here, but then there's also Three lights going to be in this ceiling void here. And the power sockets have just dug through the wall, put the box in place. And then there's the conduit going up there. That's the light switch. And again, they've covered it with the mesh, ready for the rendering. 
And that's it really, around the house, that's what they've done on every single socket and light switch box. This we couldn't make our mind up whether to have a TV point in the, in the living area because we don't watch TV really. But in the end we decided to have one so we've got a power socket here and the TV point's going to be in this corner. And then the conduit runs up into the ceiling space for the cables to be run. This is where the consumer unit's going to go. You see the amount of conduit they've run down to that. Yeah. And then this point we've had put here, ready for a data point for the Wi-Fi router. And there'll be a power socket there as well, obviously, to power the router. And then the guy who was around checking everything last night, he suggested a light in the cupboard. I wasn't going to bother, but he's just said, yeah, do it. So we're going to have a switch on the wall there to light the cupboard. Unusually, another consumer unit upstairs as well for the upstairs electrics. Something that you don't see back in the UK. It's just the one downstairs, but here they put one upstairs for the upstairs electrics and one downstairs as well. Let's have a look. The plasterers have been in. Coming together now, isn't it? And what they do, the floor is absolutely soaking wet. It's like a, a paste on the floor, all the dust and everything. But what they do, they use the hose and they just flood the, the walls, they absolutely soak the walls, and understandably so. Because you imagine trying to plaster in this heat. I know back in the UK, with the temperature there, you have to work very fast because the plaster dries out so fast. And um, imagine, imagine what it's like here. Imagine what it's like here with this heat. It just dries out so fast, so they put the hose on the wall and they just saturate the walls so the blocks soak up as much water as possible and then they start plastering. What did you say, Pookie? One sweetie, isn't it? They leave that, I mean they're going to do it. Oh, that's for the switch for the understairs light, yeah. In here they've got a two rendering tools, isn't it? Must be. Yeah, they'll smooth the walls in there, yeah. They'll make it nice for you. This is your bad girl's no, cupboard. When, no, you, when you misbehave, this is where you're going to be locked in, okay? No, I'm telling you. You misbehave yourself, you're going to be locked under the stairs. You'll be crying. Ah, oh, well, I'll just poke, poke little chilies through at you and things like that. <laughs> you're going to miss me so much. I miss you so much, will I? You can't leave me Of course, I'll just come and peek through the holes in the door. Just make sure you behave yourself, okay? So another day we'd have done really well. This room I think is pretty much done. Yeah. Oh, we've still got this wall to do. It's starting to come together now, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You can see where the, what they, what they put it in. Oh, the edge, yeah, I'm sure the they'll do something with that. What they'll probably do is put a little, what they call a chamfer on it, a little edge that's yeah. sloping. Yeah, you can feel there, it's really rough. Hmm, they must do something, isn't it? Yeah, but what you'll find is, if they're doing a surface like this, mm. they'll do this surface and they'll leave that surface until this is dry, and then they do that afterwards. It's like, if you look at this, uh, come over to the post here, it's easier to explain. So, they render this wall, or plaster this wall, mm -hmm. here, and here, see that? Mm -hmm. Now the thing is, they can't do that bit at the same time, because they'll be digging into this. Yeah. So once this is dry, and that's dry, then they'll plaster that piece there afterwards. Okay. Yeah, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that can be your exercise. When, during the rainy season, if it's raining, you can just yeah, run up and down stairs. I feel over and then you respond to it. Oh, I just noticed. Show me your flower. Huh? Come here in the light. Beautiful, look at that. What? What happened? 
What happened? <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Accidents. I love this. I love these trestles that they use. Imagine trying to use that in the UK, made up of old bits of stick and now together. But it does the job absolutely fine. You think so? It's really difficult, really hard. Well, that's the that's the that's the um, sign of a true craftsman is when they make a difficult job look easy. Mm. And you grab that and try and do it yourself, you'd be knocking yeah. chunks out. Yeah. It's very difficult. Look at that. That sponge isn't even connected to that that trail. Oh, I think they use something else. I think they use. Um Be used that one first, isn't it? Yeah. And it's don't know. Yeah. And they just put this on, see, they put it on oh, rough right like on that, it. and then they start polishing it and smoothing yeah. it afterwards. Yeah. And again, what they do, they soak the walls completely. So it doesn't draw all the moisture out of the um, render when they put it on. Take the water out? Let the water out? No, what they do, they, they hose the walls, they make the walls very wet. Because these blocks, these blocks are very porous, they soak up a lot of water. Yeah. So if you just try to put plaster or render on this wall dry, it would suck all the moisture out and the render and plaster would just That's fall off. So if they soak this first... Yeah, soak this first, and then that way, when they put the, the render on, it doesn't soak all the moisture out. Okay. That's beautiful. Look, they've done loads today, haven't they? Oh. And already they've started digging out, ready for the drains, for the waste pipes from the toilet and from the bathroom. Shower room, should I say. There's no bath in there. Yeah. Resting room. <laughs> Before I continue with the house build here in Thailand, I'd just like to take you back to where home was back in the UK and answer a question I get so often, I really do. A lot of people watch the video linked with um, where we lived in the UK and so many people are asking the same question over and over again. And that question is, what made you move away from such a beautiful part of the UK to come and live here in Thailand? Where, all right, we're not living on the beach, we're living in a city, Udon, just outside of the city, Udon Thani. And I know what they mean. They're thinking, well, you know, this lovely place called Bexley, which is on the border of um, London and Kent. It seems so organised. It seems so clean. You've got the beautiful houses with the pretty gardens. And Thailand doesn't have that um, pristine look, I'll say, in most places. You know, it's a little bit rough around the edges. It's not about the aesthetics. You look at some of the little cafes and things like that. They're not so worried about the looks of things. It's more about the functionality. And believe me, this place in Bexley, absolutely great place, where some of the more well-known residents included um, 007 actor Roger Moore, singer Kate Bush, artist William Morris, and the children's author Roald Dahl. They all made Bexley their home at some point in their life. But for me, Bexley and the majority of the UK just became an empty shell. And by that, I mean the houses... Um, the look of the houses, the size of the houses, the Bentleys, the Porsches, the McLarens sitting on the drive became more important than the human beings that were actually living there. I was finding that the majority of the population were becoming um, insular, more selfish, anger and um, frustration seemed to be on the increase as well. You'd go out 
in the morning on the road to drive into London, within 10 minutes you'd have someone cutting you up, shouting and screaming about absolutely nothing at all. And maybe it's because their lives have become more stressful and it's more difficult for them to pay for their Porsches, their Bentleys and their, you know, everything else and the big houses. Maybe that's it. And they see those things as a necessity and if they find it harder to get them, they vent their anger on people who might be in their way and um, what's preventing them maintaining that lifestyle. Common sense seems to have been taken away from the population as well in the UK. Health and safety's gone crazy. Health and safety isn't so much about people's safety anymore it's more of a money money making exercise a friend of mine posted this on facebook a few days ago and it is a perfect example of what you find everywhere in london this is a tiny little back street no need for any signs there really or restrictions at all but they put them in place and of course there's the camera sign there which tells you if you dare if you dare go against what they're saying you're going to get fined they're going to take 70 pound out of your pocket it got to a point where driving in london made me feel like i was being a naughty child and being told all the time what you can't do, you can't do this, you can't do that, with the amount of signs that are everywhere. Even in the little village in Bexley where we lived, you know, if you wanted to stop outside a shop in your car or on a motorbike and run in and get something from a shop, you couldn't do it. There were cameras there, tiny little village, and uh, cameras there ready to find you immediately. So, plain and simple, Thailand's not perfect. There's problems here, I know, it's got its faults. But my life here is just a complete utopia as opposed to the UK cost of living is a lot cheaper the freedom that I feel the fact that you haven't got all of those restrictions or as many restrictions as you've got in the UK life just feels so much easier for me here I wake up in the morning with a smile on my face there's no dread no fear of looking forward to the day it's just perfect for me it really is and it doesn't matter that the curbs are not as neat and tidy as they are in London, or the streets are not swept every day, or they are (laughs) saying that, the majority of the streets are swept a lot here in in where we're living. But I don't care about that ragged edge look. It's more about quality of life and the people that are around me. The people are much more friendly. I've made so many friends here, local people, since I've been here. In Bexley, you could spend weeks, months and years there and not even know your neighbours. So that's it. That's all it is. It's purely about the people that are living here as opposed to the people in the UK and the lifestyle here. Seems much more relaxed and for me, it certainly is. Let's get back over to the house build. They've done, they've taken out a part of this concrete base here, which is just outside the back door. To bring this pipe, so we've got the water main, the water main coming in on this pipe here, and they've also fed the waste pipes out for upstairs. You see, coming out there. So I think what they're doing, they're going to be putting some block work in down here just to cover this in. Once they're finished, and then they'll relay this this concrete base. And they've put the sink waste in there and the feed for the tap, the cold water tap at the sink. Over there is the water feed for the toilet. And over there, the feed's in place for the shower. And then up here, that's the waste pipe for the upstairs sink, the toilet. The drain in the floor and over in the corner there is the um, waste for the the shower. Our bedroom's complete now with the insert there between the rendering and the door frame. Let's have a look. Oh, they've still got a few edges to do here and there. Mm-hmm. Just got a few edges to do, window frame. So they've got the waste pipe for the sinks and the floor drains and the toilet in place coming down here into the ground and also the feed pipe, the thin pipe is the feed pipe for the water going in, feed the toilet and the, and the sink. Go along there, the one we asked for yesterday, take yeah, it off. For some reason, I don't know why, but they put these extra taps in the bathroom. So you've got the shower unit over there, and then next to it, 
just down there on that far wall, there was a, a, a pipe ready for a tap and almost all Thai houses have it. And when we spoke to the builders, they said, yeah, it's there in case there's a problem with the water. Well, I'm thinking that doesn't make any sense because if the, sh okay, the only thing that can go wrong really is the shower unit. If the shower unit stops working, you'll still get water, but it won't be heated. And if there's a problem with the water supply coming into the building, that emergency tap won't work either because it works off of the same feed. I don't understand why they have those additional taps just sticking out of the wall. And under here where it was smooth cement and they're going to render, they've just slapped on this rough render here just to key into when they actually put the smooth layer over, when they fin put the finishing layer over so that it's easier to get it to grip on the underside of the stairs. First time I've seen scaffold clamps since I've been here. Usually they use bamboo and they use that rope tourniquet to hold the bamboo together, twisting with a piece of wood and then tying it off. Never ever seen scaffold clamps here before. And last, the thing is today is a uh, like a transitional day really because the team that came in to do the block work all the walls and the rendering they finished yesterday and took took all their tools home with them and they're done for now they'll probably be back to do a few little bits and pieces here and there but the bulk of their work is complete now and the last bit that they did quite symbolically was the threshold step as you walk in the front door of the house with all the rendering complete inside the building and outside, that was it. The main builders, they, they packed up their tools, they went home. And next step, in the next stage, you'll see the windows going in. And you'll see the second problem that we had since the build started, which I think getting to this stage, uh, having two problems isn't a bad thing at all, really. And uh, the second problem turned out to be banana-shaped doors. You'll see what I mean in the next update. So thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Mm -hmm.